what is going on you guys this is another tuesday and we are back for another right to real love live show oh man tonight is gonna be a good topic as y'all can see we're gonna be talking about side chicks but before we get into it i want to say what's up to my lovely co-host tatiana how are you doing today hey jay thank you i'm glad to be here it's another great episode tonight i'm ready to get into it oh yes yes and we have two very special guests one returning guest my girl pamela how are you doing today i'm good how are you guys doing Doing amazing, doing amazing, doing amazing. And my homeboy, the one and only, my man, Don Cutter. What's up, bro? Hey, how you doing, Jay? How you doing, Tatiana? I'm happy to be here. Hey. Oh, yeah, man. Yo, Love I'm excited you. to have you guys here on the show. Um, So just to give some context into this whole conversation about mm -hmm. side chicks, I got to give all the credit to Tatiana because uh, you made me aware a few a few weeks ago about what today is because I knew what yesterday was. I think most people know yesterday is Valentine's Day, but she was telling me it's something special about today, too. Uh, you mind sharing with us what today is? <laughs> yes. At first, it was a joke, right? Because some people made jokes about it. Oh, the side chick gets their own day. They don't get Valentine's Day because they're the side chick. They don't get the main event of Valentine's Day. But um, usually it goes, they would get the attention and the flowers, the candy, the dinners, whatever you have it, um, the day after Valentine's Day, because the guy would have to make time for his main girl, okay? So the side girl can get either the day after Valentine's, which is the official, unofficial uh, side chick's day, or any day before Valentine's Day, but just never on Valentine's Day. So some some women do feel a way, especially if they know that they're in that situation, that they can't have their, their man on the official love day, but they have to have him on the supplemental days. It's, it's something. <laughs> so I was like, we yeah. need to talk about this, Jay. It's something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking forward to getting into it. Yo, we were already having a little conversation before the show, before we came live. And I think everybody is excited to dive into this topic. But just for the sake of allowing a few more people to join us in the live chat, what I want to do is just start off with our icebreaker. So what we do is we have a segment where we ask three random questions. So I'm going to come over to the ladies first, Pamela. So between okay. one, two and three, which question do you want? Number two. Number two. So the question is, what is one item on your bucket list? Oh, that's easy. I want to go to the Maldives. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wanna okay. Go to Why? <laughs> I just having a place where it's just like so away from all the craziness and just something that you're just surrounded in nature and beauty and just being able to have the bungalow and the water and relax. You can't even really drive a car. You're going to drive a bicycle around the island. Yes, I, I want to experience that. Yo, I hear that. Yo, that's what's up. That's what's up. So yeah. let me give some shout outs real quick. My man J.D. Cardo is in the building. What's going on? He said it's good to be here. Glad to have you here, bro. And none other than Tiffany is joining us. What's going on, Tiffany? She says, hey, Jay, Tatiana, Pamela, and Don Cutter. I'm looking <laughs> forward to a great show. Yeah, you definitely going to get one of those tonight. I promise you. So coming over to you, Don Cutter, man, what's one thing on your bucket list, bro? Skydive, actually. Really? Yo, yeah. I never would have thought that, bro. I know, man. I'm a risk taker, man. I mean, <laughs> going to Cedar Point almost every year, like, you know, roller coasters and stuff. Like, I like that rush. You know what I'm saying? I almost bought a motorcycle, too, but I didn't, mm. I didn't do that. But I like thrill-seeking. You know what I'm saying? It's a rush for me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at that. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, so if you go skydiving... <laughs> Does it matter where? Like, cause you know, some people like to go and do it over in Dubai. Other people have other places that with, that they want to do it. I gotta research that. I'm, I'm not sh too sure about where and how and how like, yo, it long as the plane works, you know, long as the, long the my parachute works. You know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think the first time you drop is tandem. So yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then after that, you can start doing it on your own. So I just want to at least do it once. Gotcha. And this, you know, this is something that. You know, I, I either I'm okay if I don't do it, <laughs> but you know, it's okay if I do it too. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, check this know. out. JD said skydiving is the best thing that he's done. So, like, oh, there wow. you go. You got somebody co signing it, man. So, oh, man, definitely man. go ahead and make that happen, man. Yeah. Want to give a shout out to KSM. We appreciate you for joining us. Hope you will enjoy tonight's show. And coming over to you, Tatiana, what's one item on your bucket list? I was uh, happy to hear Pam's because she said Maldives. I'm like, that's definitely on my list of places to visit. 
Um, definitely Tokyo to Japan. And if I want to do a specific activity on the bucket list, it's like a live version of Mario Go Karts. Like you can dress up in the costumes. Like <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> so I definitely want to try that. That's yo, cool. that's what yo, that's I didn't cool. even know that was a thing. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. So huge shout out to my man Black Belt in the building. Yes, he says the MVP has arrived. Yeah, he, he's coming for that back to back title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and yo, Timothy says, do your research and be safe. I'm sure that's for you, Don. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Don Cutter, man, coming over to you. You want question number one or three? Three. <clears throat> question three is what would you do if you were on a date and your date showed up 30 minutes late? Um, I feel disrespected, but the show must go on. <laughs> I'm a, I'm there for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not, I'm not mad at that, bro. Not mad at that. Uh, I mean, Yo, shout out to Tanisha <laughs> for joining us. Nah, you had something else you want to share, D? Nah, for real. Like, you know, I, I can see how it can be disrespectful on the other end. Like for uh, the guy being late to a woman, you know what I'm saying? That that means he kind of don't care. But for me, I just take it like, oh, she's. You know, taking your time, trying to be her best. You know, things can happen. So I'm not really tripping on that. Unless okay. it's just a, apparent that, oh, she's not interested. I'm like, damn, why are we even here? You know what I'm saying? But I'll figure that out in the course of everything. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Got you. That's what's up. Pamela, what about you, man? You've been waiting for this brother for 30 minutes. You were a lot more understanding than I am. Uh, no, I probably would have been like, okay, I'd text you, see where you're at. But I'd be like, I think we probably need to reschedule, you know, just when there's a better time. Hopefully you have a good explanation as to why you're late. Um, but I wouldn't, cause I wouldn't do that to a guy. I think that's disrespectful to someone's time. So no, I, mm -mm. Nah, that's real. Yo, you're not alone. Cause Black Belt says, I ain't gonna do nothing. I'm not even there no more after 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 So Tatiana, what about you? He's 30 minutes late. Yeah, and there's no communication whatsoever. Nah, they didn't give us those details, but let's assume like, nope. Oh man, that's that triggering ghosting memories. So I definitely <laughs> wouldn't want to stick around either. I would like have my own solo date and just move myself to another table or and just enjoy the evening on my own or just leave, you know, because I wouldn't. Because if you didn't even communicate, you know, it shows that you don't care or anything like that. You know, people come up with all these excuses as to why they couldn't answer the phone or why they couldn't call you. So I would just feel a way about it for sure. But I would try to make the most of the night. Okay, that's what's up. So I'm curious, though. So you said that you would do like the solo day. If you're still there and he shows up, like, what are you saying when he comes up to you and like, yo, I'm sorry, I'm late? Yeah, um, he's going to see it on my face that I'm disappointed and probably mad at him. So we're going to have a nice little laugh about that. I might want to hear his explanation. I might not. It depends. It really depends on how he like treats it. You know, he has to come correct after that. But I probably, oh, that's fair. yeah, that's that fair. First, if that's the first date and that's the first impression, mm, yeah. <laughs> I've been late. I was able to recover. <laughs> 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 that. But you know, but it didn't last long anyways. Oh, uh, <laughs> yo, check out Black Bell. He says she low key lucky if I don't stay just to talk to her about the roster <laughs> spot that she just lost. <laughs> Not the roster <laughs> spot. <man. laughs> yo, yo, he he's on he's on one already, y'all. He's Yay. ready. <laughs> so here's our last question for the night. Before we get into our main topic, coming over to you, Pamela. If you could be best friends with a celebrity, who would it be and why? Hmm. I know I can't it's probably take you too long to think about it, but I'll have to like really. You know what? I probably would choose. I'm going to actually choose Gabrielle Union. Okay. Because she drinks. So <laughs> we would be able to bond on that. And she just seems like she would just be somebody like really chill. Like you're not trying to be pretentious. She always seems like she's just kind of still, even though she's super rich, she's still down to earth, kind of humble. So somebody I could really have fun with, you know, really have a good time. So yeah, we probably could be cool. Okay, I can respect that, respect that. So before I come over to Don, I want to give a huge shout out to Jenna James for joining us. We appreciate you. She says, 
I was late once because hair appointment ran long, but dude looked like he just rolled out of bed. So she bailed. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, she flipped wow. it, came late and decided not to stick around. <laughs> she did that 180 like, oop, okay. All right, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so Don Cuddleman, coming over to you. You can be best friends with any celebrity. Who's it going to be and why? Probably Eddie Murphy. Hmm. Eddie okay. Murphy. Uh, just a funny good uh, coming to America, my, you know what I'm saying? My, one of my right. favorite movies. And, That's a classic. Uh, yeah, Aries too, so we could probably get along. You know, it's, it'll be, you know, like he got a lot of connections. Right. That, that for sure. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's right. And he, do, and he do put his own people on. So, mm. he, he, you know, he put one of his best friends in, uh, in almost every single, uh, was his, one of his best friends was always a part of uh, every single one of the projects he was on, even when he was on SNL, like early on, like I'm, mm. I was too, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I, I wasn't even born when he was on SNL, but you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm just, uh, uh, knew that story. So yeah, Eddie Murphy, you know, been in everything, you know? Nah, that's yeah, dope. That's dope. I ain't mad at that. Laughs, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, you definitely gonna get your laugh on there with Eddie Murphy, for sure. Yeah, ain't no yeah. question about that. Tatiana, what about you? You can be best friends with any celebrity. Who's it going to be and why? Mm, I think I would pick Sierra because we're both mm. October babies. And she's a married woman, so I want to learn from her and how she operates as a wife. And Russell might have some single friends, you know, just in case. <laughs> but I need to put my friends on. <laughs> um, and she's just fun and fabulous, too. So I like that about her. Okay. So before we get into our main topic, yo, Black Black Belt is at it again. So this is a continuation from last week, and he want to get Don Cutter's perspective on something that we discussed extensively last week. So he says, yo, Don Cutter, what if she showed up to the date late since she was getting her four-inch long nails glued on? Like, how would you respond then? <laughs> I'm sorry, one more time? So, <laughs> so, okay, let me give you some context. Last week we okay. was having a conversation about, you know, him and I not really being fans of women with like long nails. So he's kind of playing off of what our conversation was last week and asking you if the reason why she's late is because she was getting these four inch nails put on before coming to the date. How would you respond to that? If it, if it, if it's for what she want to do, you know what I'm saying? If it makes her happy. I'm, I'm not, I don't have no issue with how a woman, you See, know, you, you know, do, you know, does for herself, you know, her hair, her nails, that matters to her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily for me, you know what I'm saying? But if, if it's nice, if it's done well, I'm going to acknowledge it. I'm going to compliment her on it. So it'll be all good. See, that's real. Ain't see, and ladies, this is what I tell y'all. Every <clears throat> man doesn't think alike. So y'all see, like, Donovan, for those that was here last <laughs> week, he got a different perspective than what me and Black Belt was sharing last week, which is so important for you guys to see. Us as men, we got different flavors and perspectives <laughs> and preferences when it comes to the ladies. So I appreciate you bringing us in that, D. Yeah, for cool. sure. oh look natalie came in she like not the nails again yo i <laughs> promise you that's the that's the one and only question that we have about the nails <laughs> yo he said he said i'm gonna chill i'm gonna chill bro i just drank a mountain dew <laughs> all right y'all so we want to get into tonight's main topic if y'all didn't know we're going to be talking about why men have side chicks i want to kick things off just getting a perspective when it comes to our society at large so coming over to you pamela do you feel like we live in a society where it's now acceptable to be a side chick? I'm okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know because it just sounds so crazy when you say that, but it's kind of, but let's be honest, let's really keep it honest. If you think about it, society does start to embrace people being in that role now. I mean, we were talking a little earlier, it's kind of like the wild, wild west out here in these streets, and I feel like now, like I was telling you guys, I watch TikTok. I see people glorifying side chick behavior on the women's side because they talk about the stuff that they're getting from the dudes, the money, the trips. And then I also see it sometimes from the men. Like these men are very comfortable being in relationships with other women who are with somebody else. I saw a dude crying because his side chick was with her main man and didn't choose him. So I can't say that society hasn't given it a little bit more elevation what it is. I think it's becoming the norm now. <laughs> Hate this yo, day. yo, yo, was it was it real? Was it real serious? Oh yeah, he was. He was in his car too, poor baby. He was sitting oh. in the car 
<laughs> he wanted to go and see his side chick and the side chick she did what she i mean the main woman she did what she supposed to do she put that brother on block because she was with a man sent him a text i'm busy i can't be there and he's in there with the little theme song behind you know the one where oh. everybody's like all sad rolling in the bed because their man <laughs> rolling, is hold on, rolling in the bed <laughs> like this is like a theme on, on the TikTok. all these crying videos when people are sad and yeah dude was like my girl she with her main man today she chose a main man over me that's my girl like, though okay she must be really special <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah. that, TikTok, that if it doesn't do right. anything else, it's going to yeah. entertain us, okay? Yeah. That's right. too funny. It's crazy. Right. So I, I do. I feel like society is starting to make it more normal. Okay. Mm. Okay. Don, what's your take on it, man? Do you feel like we live in a society where being a side chick is acceptable? Yeah, it's kind of like they're making everything normal. It's unfortunate, though, because, um, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. And... You know, to me, it's just kind of sign of desperation instead of just kind of waiting your turn. You know what I mean? Just like, let's wait a lot. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know how else to put it. Just, is it, you know, something else going to be there for you. Because obviously, you know, that man and that woman is going to, that's their primary situation. You know what I'm saying? Unless you don't care. And I, I don't want to say that women don't care because I know that they do. You know what I'm saying? So, that's not that's not functional long term. You're gonna be messed up. So nah. I mean it's normal, but you know. Nah, that's real. That's real, bro. <laughs> nah, that's real. Tatiana, what's your take? Do you feel like our society has accepted the role of the side chick? I think they definitely gave more light to it. But I think it's um all for show and sensationalism. I, I don't think we're like giving enough um grace to the side chick like trying to understand why she is what why she's doing what she's doing it's more like let's exploit the situation for drama for likes for views to me that's what it comes off as because if you see see that scenario like a triangulation on uh, your favorite reality show they never try to get that girl side of the story or why she's doing that you know like when um we'll probably talk about this later but when portia williams was having her or scandal pretty much last May because she was with the man who was still married and it was very complicated. It just made her look bad. We were like, right. Portia, we expected more from you. But lo and behold, during that season of Real Housewives of Atlanta, she was at her married friend's house looking at all her stuff, basically coveting that girl's life. And then she ended yeah. up taking her man. I was like, ooh, girl. <laughs> It looks really suspect. So it's stuff like that that makes it seem like this is um, more normal and more like accepted. What do you think, Jay? I feel like, yeah, we definitely live in a society where it's become more acceptable for people to be operating in this role because I think a lot of times people used to operate in the dark. I don't think that this isn't something that wasn't happening, but now it's like they're out in the light, but instead of being shamed, I think it also has to do, and this is just my take. Let me know what you guys think later. I think we live in a society that is so ultra sensitive, so politically correct, where you can't call people out. You can't judge or shame anybody no. that even the behavior that back in the day we would look at and be like, you know, we, we do need to shame you. We don't need to necessarily <laughs> stone you, but like, yo, we, we do need to throw some shame and stone. some shade your way. And I was like, Yo, you can't even shade the person when we know what they doing is like clearly grimy, it's dirty, it's messy. And if it was you, you know, you would feel some type of way. But then, oh, it's not your situation. So then people are like, no, you shouldn't treat her. Or in, in the case that you mentioned, Pamela, you shouldn't treat him that way. And it's like, what are you talking about? That's my, not, that's my take on it. I feel like our society is so overly sensitive, afraid to offend people that they've just allowed a lot of bad behavior to just be out there and nobody says nothing wasn't wasn't scarlet letter like required reading in high school right it used to be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah i don't know, I know yo, I yo look at look at black paper. belt make shame great again <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i couldn't go out like i couldn't go out like that you know 
<laughs> Yo, that's funny. Huh? So I'm curious, do y'all do y'all feel that that may have had some impact with how our society is so politically correct? And, you know, it's all about, for lack of a better term, protecting the, the victim, even if the victim is, is a perpetrator in this case, because it's like, yo, you are a detriment to this relationship, but somehow in the public eye, you need to be protected because you're also a victim of being shamed by the people that feel like you shouldn't be in the role of a side chick or a side dude. Interesting. Yeah. I was going to say, I think that's kind of a based on perception because then kind of mm. thinking about what Tatiana was mentioning about Portia and her situation, I don't know the full context of it, but didn't Simon's wife, wasn't she stepping out or her man, her fiance's uh, now, Portia's fiance at the time when he was married, come to find out the wife was actually stepping out too because she just had a baby. Pamela. It was a right. whole plot twist in that whole situation. Right. So it was I, ridiculous. Yeah. So I don't necessarily know if it's about shame or is it about the the definition or your bound the boundaries within your relationship. Have those lines been blurred? Have you guys made an agreement where maybe you go out, you do your thing, I do my thing, as long as the streets don't find out, we can make it work. I mean, I don't know. So I, is it really about shame being back or is it just about people figure have decided that, you know what, I'm just going to do me, you do me, you, we're married, we're going to make this, this bond work for a while, but I'm still going to go out here and do what I need to do. So why are, you, yeah. why are they married? It could be just a financial thing. That's where a lot of people view it for the the finances of marriage. I don't know. Yeah, I don't that, know how I don't know how that works, but that's. Yeah, I, I, I don't watch the show, you know. But yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that to, one's just to, like super messy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was very messy. The one thing that comes to my mind is the fact that I just feel like people's moral compass is, is off like like yeah. I, I feel like a lot of these issues really if you go to the root of it it just has to do with the fact that a lot of people are not built or operating their life on a moral foundation or not the same moral foundation of you know generations past and i think that that has a lot to do with it where things that to me at least just based on the moral foundation that i stand on i look at some stuff and i'm like Nah, like I one couldn't picture myself doing those things, and I definitely wouldn't want to be in a, re a relationship with a woman that thought that those things were okay. But as you mentioned, Pamela, some of these people like they cheating, they they spouses cheating, they spouses with somebody that's cheating, that's in a relationship, it, and it's it's a whole bunch of confusion. It's like it's like a, a worldwide web of cheaters, and they all together, right? Yeah. And then don't let it be kids. They confusing with aunties and uncles and stuff. Like I'm really worried about what with it when it comes with the kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't want my kids to be confused about who's who. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. yeah, I mean, and I know that's down the road and stuff like that. But some of these people be having children too, mm -hmm. and we ch and these children are not kids. They like eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen years old sometimes, and. They kind of going to school embarrassed. I, I got to think about them sometimes. You know, so I don't have children, but I don't want to be in a situation where I'm embarrassing my kids. Right, right. That's a great point. <clears throat> great point. Want to give a huge shout out to Ebony for being in the building. She says the tea. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, like uh, a lot of this stuff, it is tea, especially when it comes to these celebrities and whatnot. So yeah, it's it's crazy. So coming over to you guys with my second question, which is. Pamela, why do you think some women are actually comfortable being the side chick? Okay. I think personally, because um, like we were kind of talking about it earlier, you know, I feel like as women, some of us have been in positions, not saying everybody, but we've been in positions where we could be side chick adjacent. And meaning like you could have, you could have easily slipped into the side chick role because of your view of wanting this particular relationship with someone and knowing that this person has chosen somebody else and moved into another relationship, but because your self-esteem is not where it needs to be, you feel like, well, if I stick around, I can somehow change this man's mind into loving me. And I feel like a lot of times for women, when you're in those positions, it's because you're not where you need to be as a person. You don't value yourself. Your self-worth is not where you need to be. 
don't get me wrong. I think there are some women who are cool with being inside chick roles because they view it as a come up depending on the situation. But I do think a lot of regular women, um, we wind up in these positions because you feel like having a piece of man is better than having no man at all. And that was an old theory through many generational thoughts for women versus you know really just stepping into your own and saying, you know what, I deserve someone who loves me 100% for me. So that's why I feel like some women are comfortable, unfortunately, in those roles because they don't know that they deserve better. That's good. And Black Bill asks an interesting question. He says, at the end of the day, isn't a woman who's a side chick because, oh, hold on, isn't a woman a side chick because she cannot lock down the man that she wants and the man that she gets, she has no desire to be with? What do, what do y'all take on that? Oh, that, uh, in my opinion, that means that she just needs to keep looking. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, just keep looking. <laughs> like it ain't, it ain't. The, you still got a lot of life left. Life ain't over. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? Yes, I know we ain't promised tomorrow, but life ain't over either. So right. get out That's there, real. look. Yeah, you can't get fixed on that one person. It's just like right. what we were just talking about. That's the problem. You get fixated on this one person. That's all you want. You can waste years chasing behind somebody who will never be exactly what you need because you somehow have made yourself believe like this is all, you know, a little bit is better than anything. And I'll be honest, dude is not going to say no. I mean, I'm sorry. And quoting the great uh, prophet Jay-Z, if you give a man cake, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to eat cake. So if you're going to give him those options, in some instances, depending on where that brother is, he's going to take that opportunity. So you have to want better for yourself. Ah, that's real. And Natalie is agreeing with you, Pamela. She says, a lot of times we settle for the love we think we deserve. Yeah. And then Tiffany goes on to say, some women are comfortable being the side chick because they only want to be with the man for fun and not the work that relationship requires. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think, I feel like that definitely kind of, hinges on this whole concept of you know the quote unquote like modern woman and her way of thinking in the sense that they try to emulate men and we know that a lot of men that was stepping out and you know having these different people on the side it was for fun you know just not because it was somebody that he took serious and i think that you know to tiffany's point we see some women trying to emulate that where they don't really care about a relationship like like to your point, Donovan, they they not waiting for nobody because to them it's not even really about the relationship either. It's about yeah. what they can get from that man or just you know exactly. It's just like you know you hear it all the time with with rich men. You know they had a wife and then they had a mistress. You see the mistress is this gets the gets the benefits of what that marriage came up with. You know what I'm saying as far as like financially, you know he can. You know, whatever the wife ain't providing, that's what the side chick is there for, you know, unfortunately. Um, but unfortunately, a lot, some women um, look at it as like monetary gain, status gain, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's across all races, you know what I mean? So it it really don't have, it's, it's really up to that woman. So it's going to, you know, the society makes it seem like it's a it's a large percentage of side, of side chicks. It's like blown up you know but you know in my opinion in my opinion from what i see i don't really see that often but it's it is there and it could be anything you know what i'm saying it could be mm -hmm. <laughs> like we see it all the time like you know we're from, i'm from the d so you know this is a plant working city so you know you got their wife and they got their plant wife <laughs> no, it's wild bro it, it's wild but nah man what you're saying is real that's real d yeah. tatiana what's your take on it um i think that sometimes people hurt you know it's that saying that hurt people hurt people and sometimes women have been hurt and so they take it out in their relationships by being willing to be a side chick even if the guy told them that they're in a relationship they're willing to kind of like in part sabotage a relationship because maybe that happened to them or maybe they saw that growing up and they don't fully trust in the concept of love or the 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 work that it takes to have a, a healthy love relationship 
So they're willing to do like get those benefits, like you all said. Um, there's another part of it where a woman just like that woman just may want to feel like she's chosen, like that person or object of her desire has chosen her. And so she's willing to settle for anything in that regard. She can settle for abuse. She can settle for being a side chick. She can settle for having him for the weekend and the girl has and his main girl has him for the rest of the week. So yeah, it's it's hard out here. Sometimes, you know, to answer Dojo's question as well, it's like there's some women who may feel like, yeah, I don't want these guys who want me. I want what I want. And so they're dead set on that to the point that they make unhealthy decisions in their relationships. No, nah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point, you guys. Yeah, and I'm curious. I know we talked about before the reason why some women will enter into these situations is because they have hopes of one day being the main chick. Do you guys feel like that's still the primary reason why some some women enter into the role of a side chick is because they're still hoping or pining that they can be the main? And if so, my, my way of thinking is like, do you feel like he's going to be monogamous and faithful to you and not have somebody else on the side if you do become the main? Like, I just look at it logically and I just can't really figure out what what they're thinking I, i'm curious ladies what's y'all take on that questions that need answers i feel like that's never asked of the woman who's the side chick i honestly feel like they never walk through that that door like hello so what happens after the vacancy has been like filled like are you going to now have a vacancy for the side chick and you're now that you're the main and are you concerned are you paranoid like she probably will be but they never like you know, explore those stories. They never explore that. It's always like the main chick, um, side chick and the guy dynamic, but never what happens when the woman does get him. Except for if we go back to, never mind. I was thinking about a Tyler Perry movie, but it didn't really go. <laughs> Y'all go ahead. No, I, I agree. Like I, I was taught that however you got them is how you are gonna lose them. Mm. So yeah. this yeah. point blank like right that. Yeah, But there are some women who do carry this false belief that somehow you magically can turn this brother into the, the, the brother who is going to be committed. You're different from mm -hmm. that woman, from that main there woman. Go, there you go. So that, that belief and you are going to make him committed. Yeah. And I think a lot of women do go into that because unfortunately, you know, as women, we, you know, we, when we want what we want, we're going to do everything in our power. We have tunnel vision to make it happen. And we don't want to see things sometimes that are being presented to us. We just want what we want. Because, yeah. you know, like you said, how you got them is how you're going to lose them. That is the truth. But when you're in that situation, you're not thinking that way until you're faced with that same situation of what happened to you. And then you're mad about it. And it's right. like, what are you yeah. mad about? That's how right. you started it. You have to expect he's not going to change for you. He's going to be with you because he thinks you're cool with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of the Tristan Thompson, Khloe Kardashian situation. <laughs> we talked about it before on the show, but it's another example. Like he had a side yeah. chick, this chick got pregnant, and Chloe's still with him, I think. So it's just ooh. today. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. It's today. wild. And what we yeah, like two, two or three new babies in now, isn't it? Or I don't know, but I'm like, I don't be dude, with you, but... me either. But I'm like, <laughs> if that's if Chloe Kardashian, she's a millionaire, sis. No offense, girl. What makes you think you're gonna be different? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just Yo, it, saying. It's wild. <laughs> it's wild, y'all. So we had a comment that came in from Tiffany. She says, "I don't think women who are side chicks really have an expectation to be the one today." In the past, maybe it was the mindset. And that kind of goes back to the question I was asking earlier. Then, like, what is the end game of the side chick? Well, then it's, if, if you pose it like that, then it's financial and, and uh, uh, financial up, upward. Mm -hmm. uh, mobility. Mobility, thank you. And and status. That's it. Yeah. That can only be For it. For sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if, if you think about it. No, go ahead, Pamela. No, I was going to say, if you think about it, that fits into what we were talking about earlier about the glam, the glitz, the prop, the hype. People are doing everything for a look nowadays. Yeah. So yes. Scandal. That, that's all it's about. For the gram, for trying to get their own show. Facts. Right. All type of stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, and then trying to spin that and get a talk show. And then now they're an expert. Like, 
Yeah. <laughs> Why you an expert? You a, like the expert? Started out as a whole side chick. Okay. Yeah, but like, some side chicks got shows and deals and songs and all types yeah. of stuff going on. So absolutely like they're trying to use this as like a career development plan in some instances yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a legit career path which is crazy For let me give you a shout out to miss pollard so glad to have <laughs> you in the building hope you are enjoying the show so far tiffany also says yes it's the convenience money and sex and i'm curious i want to throw one other thing out there is it the possibility of getting pregnant like like with the whole Tristan Thompson and Chloe, they, do you feel like some of them are like, yo, I want to get the baby so that they can solidify what we talked about, the money, yeah, the fame, the connection to that man? That's the check. That's a check for at least 18 years. But that's a lifelong commitment. Right. You know, y'all laughing, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> I'm, I know. I'm looking at it from a you know, yeah. real point of view. Like, that's, I'm gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. It'd it be like that. And that's why you gotta, as a man, you gotta be careful of that. If you playing playing with your main and then you try to have a side, mm -hmm. you, you can make a mistake with the side. And what you gonna do? Now your right. kid is confused. Remember, I was talking about the kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And KSM makes a good point, and we had mentioned it earlier, and it's it's definitely important to continue to touch on it. Don't forget the fact that there are side dudes as well. Does the shame right. goes both ways? It definitely oh, goes both ways. Oh, it definitely yeah, well, goes no, both like, ways. I, I, I carry the same amount of energy whether we talking about a side chick or a side dude. Like I feel like I just think that women mean. get away with it better. <laughs> That's all. Because <laughs> a side dude is gonna be quiet. He's there for one purpose. Right. Okay. Yeah, that reminds me of the August L. <laughs> Because right. when Buddha had her entanglement, like August Alcina was like the most famous side dude of the year that year. <laughs> and so to me, he and he was, you know, he tried to make something out of that, right? He came out with a song about it. He was doing some interviews here and there, but I think they probably had an agreement that he couldn't say too much. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, that's that's reckless. And we were, I don't know if guys respected him, like. I don't know how guys look at side dudes. Like, what, are, right what are your thoughts about that? Like Black Bell said, I say it's more embarrassing to be a side dude than a side chick. And that's real talk. Yeah. Like, with women, I feel like, and not all women, right? But, like, women who operate within the, the side chick ecosystem, like, they're high-fiving her. They're like, yeah, girl, Whoa. that's a come up. But, like, there's, I don't know too many dudes that's like, yeah, bro, I'm glad you the side dude. Like, because <laughs> the minute you you the minute you let a real one know that you a side dude, we looking at you like, bro, I can't trust you. Like, you, like, you are not in my at, circle no more if I know you move and operate like that personally. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and like we said, we was laughing at my man earlier when you told us a side dude on on, on TikTok crying and right. stuff. Like he a whole clown to me. Mm -mm -mm. That's yeah, I was, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like, it's like he's a simp for telling that. Oh, okay. uh, you know, he's got to keep it on the low. But then, kind of bringing it back to what you guys were saying about the having babies. You know, I was thinking about what Don Cutter was saying earlier about the impacts to children. You know, I know personally in my family, I have seen that happen because back in the day, like we were talking about, that was no big deal for people to have multiple families and you're not meeting your brother, your mom, your dad until you're like 18 years old because your, your dad's got a whole family living down the street from you and you have no idea. We don't, you know, that's the de the de the detriment of doing this that. Actually, thing. happened to Terrell Owens. His dad yep. stayed down the street from him. Yeah, right. So just imagine what that must be like. So for these people to be mm -hmm. out here having babies with people and creating whole nother families, and you're probably not even going to be a part of that person's life. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to that? You're just creating, unfortunately, a cycle where that's potentially another man who's going to go out here. I hate to say it and not have a good be able to have stable relationships because they didn't see that type of thing growing up, you know? Right. Good point. Anything right. you want to add, Tatiana, before we go to our next question? Yeah, um, it reminded me of the classic Carl Thomas song, I wish. And I didn't realize this. Carl Thomas, technically, sorry, the music is playing, that Carl Thomas in that song was the side dude because he was saying that he fell for this woman who said that she was unhappily married with children. And he said, I wish I never met her. I was like, ooh. Right, yo, we ain't know what they were singing about back then. <laughs> <laughs> that was something else, but yeah. I don't think I do anthem out here. 
I don't think guys <laughs> would get the glamorized treatment that side chicks get in society based no. off of what you all shared. So thank you for answering. No, because I mean, think about it. A lot of those things that we were saying the side chick would be looking at as her end game, that's, that has hypergamy written all over it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a man chasing after a woman for his come up, like that's not viewed as as manly in, in our no. society, not from a man or a woman's perspective that I know mm -hmm. of. No, because we're supposed to be, as men, supposed to be providers. We're not supposed to come up. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, yeah. it's, it's happened, but it's not supposed mm -hmm. to. Right. It's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, y'all know, whenever it's the, the dude that is like, he, he got his come up from his wife, people look at him different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They call it a kept man, I think. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. All right, so let's push to our next question. So let's actually start talking about the men a little bit. What would you guys say are some signs that a man has a side chick? Like, what are some things that we can look for that can indicate, like, yo, that dude probably got one on the side? Um, let's start with a man's perspective. Don, what's your take? <laughs> I almost cursed. <laughs> <laughs> yo, you doing good, bro. You doing good. Forty minutes in, yo, you good. <laughs> uh, probably uh, shiftiness, like multiple phones. I know sometimes we do have multi, you know, two phones for certain reasons, yeah. but like multiple, multiple phones, multiple accounts, burners. You know what I mean? A lot of shifty behavior. You know, shady behavior. Uh, I, I guess uh, particularly maybe. Um, yeah, just you know, like like today, like you either doing something today, or you did something over the weekend, and you made her feel special over the weekend, knowing that Valentine's came on Monday. You know, it's like like oh, you know, I gotta work, baby. You know what I'm saying? So I, let's do it on the weekend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, you know what I'm saying? Game, you know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I think of it. You're lying, like just moving this. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Like, and they gonna eat it up, especially if she's into them like that. She's gonna eat it up. You know, they ain't go, she ain't gonna have no discernment of the behavior. It's totally subjective. You know what I'm saying? So everything, you know, is biased. You know what I'm saying? She's not gonna have uh, the ability to be able to critically think about the situation as it is she's thinking about what it's going to be or you know what it's going to be or how it was or something like that you know what i mean so you know you got to sit and think and wait you know what i'm saying <laughs> as my homegirl would say she'd be like i'm confused <laughs> you gotta do that sometimes yeah you know what I'm yeah when stuff not adding up yeah that's good that's good and the other thing that kind of stands out to me something that i've shared with the ladies all all the time on the show is investment of time right that is one of a man's most vital resources and most men especially men that's on their business they already have limited time to provide a woman with and if you're not even getting that level of time then i think that that's a sign too like if right. the only time he can see you is when it's an exchange when there's a transaction that's occurring y'all kind of right. use your imagination but like if the only time y'all linking up is when it's some form of transaction, it's not just to see how you doing, you know, have right. a conversation, have some type of intellectual dialogue. It's always a transaction popping off. Right. I think that that's pretty much a good sign that there may be somebody else that he's engaging in those things with. Because I think most men will admit, especially a man who who do like to have intellectual conversations, you're having those conversations with, with some woman. Like that doesn't mean that you're not going to have it with every woman because every woman probably isn't likely to be able to have those conversations with you. But if you're not that woman that he's having those level of discussions with, I think that that could potentially be a sign that there may be someone else. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's his main chick, but it, there's another woman that he's connecting with on an emotional level. And sometimes that may even be the side chick, right? Like when you think about it from, um, and, and I, I don't, I'm not big on the, like the celebrity thing, but I'll use this as an example is tiger woods right one of the things i saw from his documentary is that he's using the side chick to have all of these emotional conversations and talking about his childhood and stuff and it's like it's the total flip where it's like you should be we would think be having these conversations with your wife but you're laid up with the side chick in bed telling her about your fears and what makes you you know tick and 
that's one of those things that's kind of a little bit different. So pillow talking like crazy. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. And he was doing it with, with so many. And that, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Like, yo, like no, nobody saw the signs with him, bro. Like, yeah. like the signs was was hidden, boy, for real, with Tiger Woods. Like my man was on a whole he was on a next level with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta confide to your main or your wife, or you know, uh yeah. when you yeah, do that, because you make you gotta men make time for what they really want to who they want to deal with yeah. they really do. Amen. so if you not getting that time you you're not it yeah i guess <laughs> yeah he's co to what i'm saying like time yeah. is gonna be the biggest investment that a man is making in a woman but to use the term that a lot of people like right i, I don't use it often but i know you guys are gonna know what I, when i say it quality time right i think everybody can discern that there's a difference between somebody just being around you for a certain period of time versus somebody actually spending what would be considered quote unquote quality time like was there yeah. something mutually gained from the presence of you know the two of y'all like not just that transaction like i was talking to you about that could be mutual beneficial too but the depth I think that's the thing. The depth of the time that's being spent is really important. Um, but not nah, coming over to you, Pamela, what do you think are some signs that a man may have a side trick? Um, to me, I always see it when I come home sometimes in my subdivision. It's like eight, nine o'clock at night. And when I see like dudes on the corner on the cell phone, I'm thinking, oh, he got a side. He got a side. If you're outside your house at eight or nine o'clock at night on the phone, you have a side chick, you know, um, Outside of what we were, that's like one of the main blatant ones. Cause I think a lot of women, we, we see men sometimes say, well, I got to step outside to make a phone call. Really? Really sis, that's really what you're gonna let him do, but okay. And then um, I would also say though, like you were saying the time, um, I think that's like the biggest thing. Cause a man, like you said, makes time for what they want. And as women, we like to over-rationalize sometimes oh, well, he's not spending time with me because of this. No, sis, he's not spending time with you because he does not want to. Men are not that complex. We just have to stop making them seem like they are. They are not that complex. And we have, those, those, that's your your spider sense telling you that he's he's not into you. <laughs> Man simple as heck. Man simple as heck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Nah, for real, it's not a lot to it. We tell y'all straight up, most right. of the time. Yeah, most it's, of the time. It's up yeah. to y'all if y'all if y'all want to see it or not. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So we had a comment that came in from KSM says, I know a successful male that's been doing it decades and nobody knows any different. Every female feels special and knows no different. And this is a great point because this is what I wanted to point out. And I feel like this is where, you know, when people talk about, you know, that 1% man or that high value man or whatever the case may be, I'll just say a man with means, right? If that man with means also has the intellectual ability to discern what type of woman he's dealing with, I think the situation can be hidden a lot easier because all he really has to do is keep her with the things that she wants. So if we use like what we were talking about before, if money and, and material things is what she wants and money is not a resource that is limited for him, he can always keep her in the finest jewelry, clothes, fashion, cars, whatever. And she's not going to think one way or the other. And if he's a man of means, my assumption is that he has multiple accounts. So if he's spending these and buying these things in an account that his wife is not or his main woman is not privy to, I don't think it's very difficult for him to go undetected because there's no rocking the boat when it comes to the side check. And I think that's often how a lot of dudes get find, found out is either one, they are not keeping that other woman, you know, satisfied with the things that she want and she rocks the boat. Or they just sloppy, like kind of going back to something uh, Don was talking about before we got on, which is, you know, some dudes is just lazy. Like, like if you're not really committed to the process, then of course you're going to drop the ball at some point and everything is just going to come out in the open. So I think it's a combination of those two things. But I I'm, I'm want to get your thoughts. What do you think, Tatiana, why some men may be able to go undetected? Hmm, Because they seem to be more organized, like they they have this this pathology like that they can do it, you know? So what I was going to say with the previous question, Jay, was that if a guy switches up his routine or even a woman, you know, they switch up their routine, like especially in the main relationship, all of a sudden, you know, they're doing certain things, they're, 
they're withholding from you physically or they're just not available to you like they were before. There's some withdrawal there in your relationship. You might want to pump the brakes and see what's going on with that. But um, for those who can get away with it, I mean, guys can be really like stealth, especially if they do have means like they can quiet those side chicks and keep them from saying anything by paying them off or giving them what they want in the time being. I think that's how it goes. Yo, I couldn't have said it better myself. I feel like if you got good organizational skills and you got the means, there's no reason why you should get caught. Like, un unless you want to. <laughs> like, to me, a man who is organized and has means, like, yo, he can do it for as long as he wants and nobody will be none the wiser. Because, let's be honest. For. No, go ahead, Donovan. What's <laughs> I'm up? sorry. I can't say that's what NDAs are for. <laughs> that right there, bro. That yeah. right there. Yo, <laughs> like, if Will Smith... If he had, if we, if he'd passed away, God forbid, anytime soon, and his women that he has dealt with outside of his relationship with Jada said anything, I'm pretty sure they had an NDA because he's not innocent in their relationship, too. He kind of in like referenced that there might have been something that he did as well as his marriage, as well as Jada. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was just a little more strategic about how he had these certain situations. Whereas Jada was too close to home, having August Alsina, having having him hang out with the family and then them getting close into their entanglement. I think Will wouldn't have his side pieces, mm -hmm. Lord, today, <laughs> his side chicks in close vicinity of their family like that. But that's just my theory. Yeah, I, I, I think also if you have established boundaries, because, you know, sometimes some men like to and I would say even some women like to lead from the vein, well, if you know what it is and you, the guy or the girl says, yeah, I'm cool, I know my position. If everybody's playing their part, you know, and they're, mm -hmm. like you said, they're getting what they want out of it, they're financially being compensated or whatever, you can go for a long time. I feel like it doesn't mess up until, like you said, either you get lazy and decide, you know what, I'm tired of this, let me let it blow up, right. or somebody forgets their position <laughs> and they catch feelings and they decide they need a little bit more out of this and they yeah. want to see if they can push the envelope. Yeah. Or you mess around and you messing with a crazy person too. Cause that, right. that, that right there is the X factor yeah. as well. Yeah. Like when you are dealing with somebody that you thought was a sane human being that was going to get down with the program, you'd be like, Oh man, they got one screw loose. Yeah. You, you definitely messed that one up. But you For need sure. to have a good vetting process. Like, that's the thing. Like, you would if, you think. Go, if you're going to you date multiple people, you need to have a strong vetting process, a clear understanding, because you can't afford anybody to really get out of pocket. Well, I think the sanest person can, can become crazy, too. So it, it ain't no vetting process. Speak on that, bro. That is what it is. <laughs> if, you, if you go something to do something way out of pocket, of course, you're going to see a brick through your windshield, for sure. <laughs> or or your tire slash or or, or all your of that. Car she, up. All of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't let her don't let her have your like personal identity information too. Social security numbers, credit cards. She can go crazy. You know, you don't want to do that. That's that's one of the parts of the part of the reasons why I, I would never. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Like I'm giving you too much access. You can blow this up. No. Nah. You can't do that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Nowadays they put a virus on your computer. Yeah. Everything. Any, it anything. Anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen. You could you can mess around and have ops you didn't think you had. Like, oh, that's him right there. Like who? Oh, you uh you 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 you, you know, you such and such. I'm like, yeah, like it's like serving the hood subpoenas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's problems right there, man. Yeah, you know what problems? Like you, I, you know, like from minutes aside, I heard he was giving out leaders a problem. I'm her cousin. You know, I'm like, what? See? Like, I don't think you know me. <laughs> <laughs> and look what yeah. Kane and look what happened to Kane at the end of that movie. Right. Yeah. That, that was all bad. That was all bad, man. Yeah. Yo, so we're going to pause here before we get into our main topic or our main question for the night. And I want to give Pamela the floor to let the audience know a little bit about her, her podcast, how you guys can show her some love and support. Well, thank you. Um, my, I have a podcast called the Well Done Life Podcast. 
It's a podcast set up for women. Um, I created this space because I wanted women to have a safe place where we could kind of talk, learn, and grow from each other. Hopefully avoid some of these side chick situations so that we don't have to worry about getting caught up. Um, you can find me on all streaming platforms. It's something we're going into our second year, something I'm super passionate about. And I love being able to help you know women grow and elevate. There's room for all of us out here. Yes, indeed. And I'm putting the link to her podcast in the chat Thank you. right now. So you guys can go check it out and show her some support. I definitely, definitely appreciate that. Yo, yeah, I've recently had the opportunity to be a guest on your podcast. Thank you again, yes. Kamala. It was definitely a pleasure coming a pleasure. on and, you know, love having you here on the show for sure. For Thank sure. you. So tonight's main question, right, which is the one that we got to get into. Why do some men have side chicks? So, you know, coming back over to, to my man Donovan, like, like the male perspective, let's speak on it. Why do some men have side chicks, bro? I hate to say this, but, I, you know, I don't I'm not speaking from experience. Obviously, I don't condone it, but um, personally, but, you know, to each his own. Right. But uh. The reason why I think men do have it is that whatever the main is not providing, I mean, this is the easiest answer though. The, whatever the main girl is not providing, that's what they trying to expect or get from the side chick. That's that's really it. Most of the time it's just really just sex. Really, you know, to be real blunt with it. Um, it's not to be, you know, <laughs> I don't think she loves me, you know what I'm saying? Like the pillow talking and junk like that. like. Nah, it just happens to come out sometimes like that, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, is whatever the main chick is not doing, they're going to find another chick that will do it. Simple as that. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Before I speak on it, Pamela, what would you say from a woman's perspective do you think is the reason why some men have side chicks? I think it does have a lot to do with what Don Cutter was mentioning about, you know, they can, they're not fulfilling something at home. I do think that is, but I also think part of it is because men can. I think some men are confident enough in their self to believe, you know what, I can have multiple women. I don't agree with that perspective, but they feel like they can just go out here and have multiple women at a time because they know that there are women who will allow that. And so I think a lot of times that's why men feel like they can do it. That right there, spot on, spot on, because... The key thing that you say is the fact that there's women who will allow them to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that goes back to what we were talking about at the start about the whole societal perspective where there's so many women that are down. Like like before, it was either she's going to be your main or like that. that's the end of the conversation. Like interview is over, either that job has been fulfilled and it's a wrap mm -hmm. or... Now they're like, oh, the main position is open. Well, do you have any side chick positions available? And he's like, well, <laughs> one just opened up, you know, like, and, and there you go. Back to what you were saying, Pamela, where it's like, well, man, I wouldn't even think about a side chick. But yeah, I, I think we are expanding this business. And that position just opened up and you can be our first employee. And then it just kind of flows from there. But now, nah, Tatiana, what's your take on it? Why do you think some men have side chicks? I heard, I didn't think this myself, but I heard a theory that um, men who have side chicks want to explore another side of themselves because they can't be that other side of themselves with their main. It's weird dynamic. It's like maybe they have to live up to a certain standard in the eyes of their main chick or their wife or whatever. And so they can't really be um, whatever they're trying to be with her. So they have a side chick to do that with. And some guys are like that too, where it's like this, they envision their wife as, um, as a virginal, as a Madonna, as motherly, and they can't see her as, um, in another terms, a side chick, okay? For the streets, you know, that kind of woman, you know, they can't put her in that perspective and be attracted to her in that way. So they literally go out and get a side chick so they can act out that desire that they have to do that with that kind of woman instead of their wife. And see, like that kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, why it can get so dangerous because you opening up the the, the freak bag with this person mm -hmm. that is All not right. your wife and, and yeah. like, bro, like, don't cross her. Cause then like the brick, the brick, the slash tires and, yeah. and the, 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 right. the cut off car 
That's yeah. the last of your worries, man. When, when she right. start letting them know what you really into behind those closed doors. Yeah. But Tatiana said something like real interesting because you see a lot of political figures doing what Tatiana just explained. Um, I'm not going to get into any names of those political figures. I know one come to mind from the city. But <laughs> but uh, it looks good on paper with this wife, but you got something you always kind of wanted with this other lady. So Ooh. what Tatiana is talking about is yeah. I look at that as a, a, a political move or a status move. Mm -hmm. I married this person because she looked good on paper for my constituents, for my congregation, right. for my, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever role that I'm playing in as a, a public power figure. And I'm going to get this other thing on the side and hopefully it don't blow up. Pretty <laughs> much. Point. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But I was like, see, that goes back to me where it shows that we're just not having healthy relationships. Like no people are just not being honest about what you want. Cause I'm like, if you're committed to somebody not saying that, you know, you might all be on the same freak flag level. I don't know, but you should be at least having some conversations about what, you know, what you want to do. And if you're married to somebody, I don't mean, I'm not, I don't know. I'm just assuming I've never been married that you would want to, you know, be open to your husband or your wife, whatever, to make sure you're compatible, like that's just as important as making sure that somebody looks good on paper so that you don't have to go out here and try to find a side piece. And I, I just feel like people are just overlooking that because you feel like it's some reason it's easy to go out here and get a whole nother person versus having an honest conversation with your spouse about what you want, what you need. Exactly. Right. I, I don't get that. Yeah, oh, I'm, I feel you. Tiffany had a question for you, Don. She says, Don Cutter, have you never had a side chick? I never had a side chick. <laughs> That's there you go. Really simple. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, nah, like, I feel like that's too much work. And to me, it's like, it's too much like having a whole nother relationship. And it, okay, I think we all can admit this, right? Or may, maybe y'all, y'all won't, but I, I, I'll say it, right? Sometimes you get in a relationship with somebody and you meet other people that you would be attracted to or you, start to think, man, like, dang, that could have potentially been somebody that I was in a relationship with. Even though I may have that thought, I'm not like, oh man, I actually want to go and establish a whole nother side. Like, nah, I'm just like, yo, I just missed out on that. Whatever that would have been, could have been, I don't know. It could have been absolutely nothing, but I'm not going to risk what I have in the moment to just open up Pandora's box and definitely not trying to juggle on both. Like to me, I think it's too much trouble, but I, I want to get your thought on this, um, you know, Don, as men, right? I think we both can admit, even though never having a side chick, is it fair enough to say that we have been in situations where, you know, we have multiple women that we were talking to? And I, I just want to know, like, to some people, they may be thinking, like, what's the difference between, like, managing different women as, like, a quote-unquote single man versus okay. being in a committed relationship and having another woman on the side? Right, yeah. So yeah, um, to that point, at that point, ain't no my mama told me everybody single until they married, first of all. So um talking to multiple women, uh, especially if you're dating, if you're single and the people you're dealing with are single and you haven't as a man made a decision on who you wanna be with, <laughs> all everybody aside. I'm, I'm getting macaroni and cheese. I'm getting green beans. I'm getting corn. I haven't got no meat yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> pause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From, you know, from a dude's perspective to a woman, though. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Meat, my main course, my steak, my, my lady. Um, I haven't made that decision. So, Every, everything is everything like the wild wild west is everything is up for grabs you know what i'm saying so um if i'm getting to a point where i'm becoming serious with someone and i'm talking to them and i feel like we connecting then you know i'm gonna go down and cut the other girls off i'm slowly gonna be cutting off my time for the other ones 
and create more time for the one I want to be with. That's that's logical. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not I'm not like most man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm I I, I feel like I'm an outlier because <laughs> I got I'm gonna have dudes hate me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but you know what I'm saying? Women love me, but at the same time, just I just you know what I'm saying? I got some I do got some morals. I still got a grandma. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Granny. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's that's what I, that's how I look at it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it, it shouldn't really be an issue because in my mind, I think the women should be able to do they what they want to do. They go through their roster until they be able to select a guy that they want to deal with. Hopefully the two can come together. If one is feeling the other and the other one is not feeling, like, that's just the name of the game. It's it's not it's not hard, but we make it complex because feelings are involved, time is involved, money is involved. Like, a lot of things that are precious to us are involved, so we become beside ourselves when we dealing with people, you know what I'm saying? And we get emotional, we get <laughs> crazy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just, the, it's just the, the, the nature of the game. Some people are gonna find love and live happily ever after, and some people are just gonna get hurt. It's just, that's the name of the game. So. No, that's um, real, I appreciate you speaking on that. And I, I felt like that's important because I, some people may look at it as a contradiction and I want it to be clear. Like I'm definitely a person that is okay with myself as a man or even women talking to multiple people while they're single. Right. And trying to figure out who the person is that you ultimately want to commit to. But I feel like it becomes different once you actually enter into a relationship, because at that point I've made a decision. She's made a decision. We've decided to commit to one another. And that comes with the expectation and even the assumption to a certain extent that the other people have been cut off. Like, like there's nobody left, no remainders. Like it's just the two of us at this point and we're moving together um, monogamously. That, that would be the presumption. And I just wanted to speak on the fact that I think it really boils down to the commitment and whether or not I'm in a relationship. See, it, I think that it's easier to manage different women that I'm talking to versus being in a relationship. Because with a relationship, you have to make a greater investment of time. You have to make a, a greater investment of, you know, really connecting and getting to know with this person and bonding with them. And trying to do that with multiple people, to me, I just feel like you're splitting yourself. You're splitting your time. And clearly, it limits the amount that you can actually apply to one person. So, for me, that's why I'm like, yo, when it comes to relationship, it's, rather, it's better for me to just keep it monogamous. And similar to you, Donovan, I, I have morals. You know, there are certain principles that I stand on and, you know, just certain behavior that I personally don't want to, you know, get involved in. Exactly. But we'd love to hear the ladies' perspective on this. I was just going to say, I, I love both of your perspectives. I think that's a very mature way about it. I think where for women, um, we just have to make sure we have clarity conversations because kind of like what we were talking about earlier with like the wild wild west of dating there's really not a lot of conversation there's a lot of assumptions in some instances but not conversations so that way it's cool for like you said a woman to date multiple people it's cool for a guy to date multiple people until you make that decision you're going to be together and then you clearly have a conversation say you know what i've cut off all these other people and i want to be with you i think it's like we have to kick it old school back to you know the do you like me yes or no are you ready to be committed yes or no you know and really be clear because i think that that's part of the problem there's just not enough clarity and people are getting caught up in it and and that's really what it's about no nah, that's a good point and the other thing that i want to add too that is different that i think when moving as a single man that's talking to multiple women is what we talked about previously on the show honesty right like if a woman asks me directly, like, are you talking to other women? Are you dating other women? I'm not going to lie about it. Right. So like, I like, yeah, like it, I am talking to other people. I am also seeing other women. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it's important to be upfront. So she knows what it is. And at that point, if she's like, well, I just want it to be me, 
then at that point, like if it's just you, we have to start talking about moving forward in a relationship because to to just limit myself to one person when I'm dating and trying to figure out who I want to commit to in a relationship, that that limits me. Like, and that's just my personal perspective. Maybe nobody else may agree with it, but I feel like the point of dating is for me to have the freedom to get to know other people. Once I enter into a relationship, I've made a choice that this is the person that I want to go further with. Um, but that's just my take. And there was a comment that came in from um, Black Belt. He says, just for the record, in his opinion, having a, steak, a secret stash chick is a sucker move. If you want side chicks, just say it up front, but let her know you're committed to her life. The sides are for play. And I, I think that kind of stems on what I'm saying is most men are not doing that. Like, I, I don't. I don't know too many men that that have side chicks, right? But I, I've have had some homeboys, and I ain't gonna say nobody's name because that's just not the way we roll over here. But I have had homeboys that was in committed relationships, and they did have some chicks on the side. But it was completely different the way that they moved and operated with their main girl versus the way they moved and operated with that side chick. And, I mean, like night and day, like like night and day, and that kind of goes back to the signs. But to his point. Most dudes ain't honest about it. Like, I, I know my boys wasn't like, yeah, I, I got this side chick over here. And no, like, no, it, it, it was a secret. Like other other guys, other people in his friend circle knew about it. But clearly the main chick knew nothing about it. And, you know, a lot of people move with that level of, you know, secrecy or dishonesty as well. Um, but now I want to come up to you, Tatiana. What's your take on some of the things that we've been talking about thus far? I think it's good. Those are some... Those are some interesting takes on it. Like, I didn't think about it that way. Like, uh, the difference between dating and being in a relationship. I'm like, yeah, it's true. Like, you're single till you get married, and we should have a healthy respect for that. Like, it is what it is. Um, but I feel like a in a relationship, there's more responsibility required of everybody involved. And so, like, when that responsibility to look after that person is is broken because there's a betrayal of trust because people are being dishonest and not operating in integrity because they want to have side chicks. It kind of like mars this internal rule that both parties have like, oh, you're not supposed to do me like that. There maybe there's unspoken expectations or there's an understanding between you two that you're not going to do each other like that because you had so many good times together. So I think it, it hits worse when you're in a committed relationship but in a dating relationship it can hurt too if you're if you're emotionally open and wanting to get involved with someone and maybe you are starting to be more like i'm ready to start to commit to this person but they're still seeing other people and you know stuff like that yeah i mean i feel like there's going to be risk involved mm -hmm. in any relationship like there's always risk involved and y'all know me i've probably been saying it over the past three four shows which is you got to be willing to count the cost right there's a risk as a man if i'm dating multiple women and one of them it could be the one that i like the most the one that i could see myself in a relationship the most and she asked me that question one day are you dating just me and i answer honestly and say no i'm not dating just you and for her, she could chuck me the deuce. It could be a wrap. Like, it, it could be over. I run that risk. But my whole thing is I have to be aware of that up front. And mm -hmm. that's what I don't think most people recognize. They don't count the cost. Like, you run the risk of, from. let's flip it. Not just the, my man, the man's perspective, but the woman's perspective. If you ask a guy that, and you know that you've only been dating him, and he tells you, honestly, that he's been dating other women. That may change your perception of him or you may recognize like, dang, you're actually, quote unquote, competing. Mm -hmm. And some women don't like the idea of having to compete with other women. So right. they will remove their self from the, quote unquote, you know, situation. And once again, that puts her in a place where now she has to start all over, especially if that was the only person that she was talking to. So we all run a risk when it comes to dating and relationships. And I think that's important to note. There were a few comments I wanted to point out really quickly. Oh, but first we got somebody new that joined us. What's going on, Ebony? Glad to see you joined us. We appreciate you chiming in and jo joining us for today's show. So Tiffany said, Pamela, we do have to communicate more as women as to what we want from a man without the fear of rejection. And 
That's real talk. That's real talk. And then we had another comment that came in from KSM saying, being a side piece regardless is a lose-lose situation, no matter how you flip it. The person has a side is losing unless... <laughs> Uh, even Olivia was losing though. Let's be real. You, you may get to the big house, yo. Like you never know. But no, nah, I think I think it is for the most part a, a lose lose situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, do you mind if I add a point? I was just gonna say I feel like I feel like we have to constantly talk about that though in a relationship. Like if you, I don't. I'm not good at dating multiple people. Like I've tried it. I'm just not. Um. I'm. I can't. So like if I meet someone, typically I'm just going to date that one person just because I can't multitask like that. And I will ask that guy like, hey, are you dating multiple people? What's your status? But I noticed, I guess, in my previous relationships, I felt like I got comfortable with your initial answer, but I didn't do enough follow up. So then I feel like as women, you set yourself up for, you know, that status possibly changing because we're not communicating enough. It's like you get comfortable in that one answer and you just assume that he's always in that same mindset. And I would say the same thing for men as they're dealing with women who might be dating just them or multiple. I feel like you have to constantly check in and, and ask. Like you, you need to have that, especially if there's multiple people involved in a relationship because what's going on? Are you still like, we're three months into this stuff and you still got like four or five other people. What's going on? Like, I need to know what it is. And you do get afraid as a woman to ask those questions. Cause you know, sometimes, and I'm looking at some of y'all faces, Don Cutter, like you're like, yeah, she's already trying to lock it down into a relationship. It's just because we have to know as women, we tend to be more emotional. So we want to know like, you know, where things are going, what's this about? So we can have some direction because if you're not trying to be committed, then let me go so I can go find somebody else who might want to actually be in a relationship. I, I think it's smart to be um, persistent with the questions. Um, that dude may not want to hear it, right. but it's going to let him know. And it, it is, from his mind, if he's immature, it's going to come off as nagging, first of all. Mm -hmm. If he's a more mature male... Um, He's not going to necessarily mind it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to answer honestly. It may not be what you want to hear, though, sometimes. But you do got to check in. Yeah. And it's and I tell my sister this, too. Like, you got to you got to know your position. You got to know, you know, what you're going to be dealing with. It's, it's OK to ask questions. I mean, you ask questions in college and high school. You ask questions in real life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've just, unfortunately, even from my own situations and from other guys, a guy I used to date said the same thing. He was like, you needed to ask more questions. Like, because I actually had, what did he tell me? He felt it was like I wasn't interested because I wasn't constantly pushing what I wanted. And I was just like, well, I just assume you told me where you were and that was the status. And he was like, nah, you gotta make sure you you let me know what you wanna do or I'll just think you're comfortable and I'll slide out. I think the way that most guys answer women's questions is like how we deal with the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, okay. It's gonna be simple and cut and dry. It's not gonna be filled with details. It's going to be straight into the point. And sometimes it might even be what you want to hear. Okay. Just so that you can move through the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm just being real. I'm I appreciate it. Real. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. That, that's real. And um, I, I would um second what, what Don said as well, Pamela, as the gentleman that you have mentioned too. Asking questions is important because I'm not the type of guy that is actively trying to take advantage of women. But just the way that my mind thinks, I can just see missed opportunities when they didn't ask pointed questions at the right time. And it's just like, OK, like I noticed, like you're not really hip to how this thing works, because if you mess with a guy that would take advantage of you in this situation, like you totally missed that follow up question. Like I threw you a whole lob and like you just you you missed it. Like you 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 let, you let the ball just roll right out of bound. And it's like, OK, like. I get the type of woman that I'm dealing with in those situations, but um, I don't know. I'm the type of guy, personally, I think that there's a limit to how 
how many questions and but more importantly to me is how are the questions being asked like what's the energy what's the tone what's the attitude in which they're being asked like if it's a woman that is genuinely interested to me like i'll sit up there and you can ask me multiple questions and i probably won't have no issue with it i would actually probably mark it as a benefit for your for your side like yo she's really interested she's genuinely interested especially if you ask in quality questions so that's not exactly what I'm saying. No, you're saying exactly what I'm. You're saying what I what I was saying in more in more detail. Like I would, I would be honored if you ask me more questions. Well, the mature male would be honored. You know what I'm saying? That you ask me questions because because you're giving me indication that you're really serious. You're very concerned about how not only are you going to be moving, how I'm going to be moving, and for, uh, hopefully how we're going to be moving. Right. So, Cause, yeah. Go yeah, because that's how I feel. And that's why I wanted to say it, because for women, don't we don't need to be like um, put you on the heat lamp with the interrogation. It's all about how you approach it. And I think real women, when you're genuinely trying to have a committed relationship with someone and you want to help that person build, you can ask the question really casually keep, over a period of time. Very normal. Go on back. Do your business. Take that information in then make decisions and move accordingly, but feel comfortable asking the appropriate questions. Right. That's the one thing that I'll say, like, if women are apprehensive or fearful or nervous to some degree, the one place I tell them that you got to overcome that fear, that apprehension or that nervousness is when it comes time to ask the important questions. Like you, you cannot be afraid to ask those questions. I mean, even if you got to send it in a text, preferably you should definitely be on the phone but I mean, at some point, you got to ask those questions like sending the text is way better than you never asking the question and not getting some form of information. But I think having a conversation over the phone or in person and getting the question answered directly is the best way to go. Uh, that's, on push, that's on both sides. That's on both sides. It is. Absolutely. It is, bro. It is. So I want to give a huge shout out to Katiwe. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight's show. And there were a few chat messages. Let me go through these really quick. I think I did this one already. So we had one from Tiffany says, her uncle had a married side chick during his marriage for several years. And when it was discovered, his wife divorced him. His side chick divorced her husband, but he didn't want her after that. So like, <laughs> like yo, that that is like, that's the confusion that we talking about, right? <laughs> like, like <laughs> He wanted you when you were somebody else's wife in his side, but his wife, his main, not going to happen. Like that right there. That's, that, that's, that's right. interesting. That is terrible. Blew up your whole spot for no reason, Lord. Oh, right. right. So, right. Crazy, crazy. Terrible. So somebody named Bad TV says, but some do know the risk. They do it for selfish reasons. That kind of goes back mm -hmm. to what I was talking about, you know, yeah. like knowing the risk. And that's real. KSM says, you can't necessarily gain the head position, especially if you're dealing with a married man or woman. They may be miserable at home, but, they be, but they've been so comfortable with home that they are staying, right? right. And this is yeah. the thing, like, I feel like very <laughs> seldom will somebody break up their marriage and leave you for their husband or their wife. Like, unless you're talking about somebody that's already separated, I think the chances of that happening is slim to none. And then we have one other one came in from Katiwe says, men answers are the worst. I feel like I'm constantly in interrogation mode. You can't let three months go by without a follow-up. It's exhausting. It's always the person who cares the most who asks. Yeah, that's real. Like the guy that's interested in you will ask you the questions. And it goes the same way. The woman that's interested will be asking the questions as well. Yeah. Got to yeah. find a lid for your pot. Not everybody's the right lid for you. So. That's real. That's real. Tatiana, I know we talked about a bit. Did you want to add anything to the things that we've been discussing? Share your thoughts. No, it was good. I just like, I know someone mentioned in there for selfish reasons. We probably talked about that before. And it's just like, even on both sides of the, of the coin in these relationships, like we're seeing just a lot of selfish behavior. And that's why it's like harder to have these relationships because people want to go in and have a main and they have the entitlement that they should have aside too. And I'm 
women as well. So it's like, okay, what what is really what are you really in a relationship for? You're just in it for yourself. Like that's not fair to the person you're with. So it's just it's just disheartening to see a lot of that being um, glamorized, and then it makes people feel so jaded about relationships that they don't want to even try to commit because they feel like it's impossible or it's always going to end badly. It's always going to end in a cheating situation when that's not the case. We have to really find the find the why we want to be in a relationship. And maybe that goes back to the point about asking those good questions. Like, why do you want to be in a relationship now? Why do you want to be commitment committed to one person right now? Like sometimes you got to ask them those questions too and get their mind, those wheels Go in and see what, what they're thinking about. See what's their reason why. Maybe they saw stuff growing up. Maybe they never saw anything positive growing up and they want to make a change. Like There's a ton of reasons why people want to be in a relationship. And there's a ton of re uh, reasons why people want to stray out of their relationship and have side people. Nah, that's real. That's real talk. So before we push to our next question, I want to give the center floor to my man, Don Cutter, man. Definitely let the people know how they can support you, show you some love and support, man. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm Don Cutter. I'm a producer, com composer, and engineer uh, for all music, uh, TV, film, uh, movies, game, well, I said film, movies, uh, game, and uh, commercial. That means, uh, you know, radio, uh, you know, artists and things of, like, of that nature. Uh, my social handle, social media handle is at Don underscore Cutter. That's for everything, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Um, you know, so I'm just really just a music <laughs> extraordinaire. You know, I can pretty much do any and everything. I, I can do everything except sing. And I'm light skinned, so I've got to work on that. So <laughs> that is hilarious. Bro. That's hilarious. <laughs> so I, I definitely drop your IG in the chat mm -hmm. so you guys can go and show some my man Don some love and support. Go and follow him. And definitely wanted to um just thank you guys for, for being on here tonight. Yo, we got a really good show plan. And one other thing I wanted to let everybody know. Let me just pull it up really quickly. Give me a moment. So we mentioned this last week, but I want to let you guys know. So tomorrow we actually have another live show that we're going to be doing, but it's actually going to be private. It's going to be a, a men chat. You know, I'm going to be bringing three men on and we're going to be talking about the things women do to lose a good man. For those of you who are actually interested in joining, all you really got to do is go over to this link that I'm about to drop in the chat. It's right to real love dot com slash men chat live. And just sign up and you can pretty much save your seat there. Just sign up. You'll get the link tomorrow when we go live. And we'll love to have you guys join us. It's as simple as that. But yeah, with that being said, I want to get back into our main conversation. And the next question that I wanted to ask you guys is, where is it? Let's see. Where is it? Okay. Right here. Why are some women okay with their man or their husband having a side chick, right? Because we, we already mm -hmm. talked about it from like the side chick and the man's perspective, but let's be real. It's some wives out here that's like, all right, y'all y'all kind of alluded to it earlier, right? With the, um, yeah, some of those celebrities y'all mentioned, but I, I just want to hear y'all thoughts. Uh, Pamela, what's your take on this? I think some women just don't like their husband. I really do. I think they marry them. They don't like them because you can love you can love somebody but not like them. That's fair. And I think a lot of women, some women are in situations where they do not like the husband. They have mm -hmm. become comfortable with the setup, the finances, the structure of the situation. And they're just like, if you want to go out there and do that's one less thing I have to worry about doing with you. So just go ahead. Um, do 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 what to do. And I think it's crazy. But I know people in that situation. I, I know someone who's in it to the point where I think the husband is fixing her car while her car is broken down. And like he gave her his car to drive while the car's there. He went, she went to the house to pick up the car. The wife was looking down from the window uh, downstairs, looking while all this exchange was going on. It was cool. That is so messy, man. I was like, <laughs> that is so messy. <laughs> wouldn't have been me, but okay. But yeah, and she knows, and she just doesn't, you know, they don't want to rock, she doesn't want to rock her happy home. So go ahead, do what you need to do. Yo, that's wild. That's, crazy. That, that's wild. Yo, yeah. Don, what's your take on it, bro? 
I ain't really got no words, bro. Like, <laughs> like yeah, that, that situation is wild. Cause that's that's wild for me. Cause it's they for me, it it feels like they're submitting to the fact that I'm not doing what he want me to do in our relationship and our marriage. So he better go out there and find something. And I'm not divorcing this dude. I'm like, whoa. Like that's the, that's the the sensation that I kind of get from that perspective. It's more like she's she's dug me in. I'm not doing nothing you asking me to do. You better find it out there. And I'm not divorcing. If you do, I get half anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's that's, I, I, that's me from like that perspective. But mm -hmm. you know, I know everybody ain't got it like that. But man, <laughs> why did y'all get married then? Right, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> but okay, that's that's, that's so we had a uh, we had a two part comment that came in from Black Belt. He says because it is more important that she is getting the fruits of all his efforts than just having sexual exclusivity. Monogamy is not a natural thing in nature. The woman getting sex is losing. And the woman who actually is his beneficiary of insurance, has her mortgage paid, has his genetic legacy and legal rights is the one that is winning. I will say he's not lying now. Legally, yeah. she's going she's gonna to get it all in the end. Yeah. Yes, yeah, everything. Yeah. Like I said, everything. she counted. I'm assuming she counted the cost, right? And she's yeah. like, yo. What they she say, she, cheaper, cheaper to keep her or something yeah, like that? Yeah, she knew what yeah. she signed up for, and she's going to have to deal with that, however she deal with it, you know, shopping therapy, wine therapy, <laughs> drinking therapy, you know, drug therapy, unfortunately, for some folks. It's, it is what it is, man. I'm yeah, sorry. That's real. So we had another comment that came in from Tiffany. She says, if you are busy and have different interests, grown apart, or have no passion left in the relationship as to um, why a wife would be okay with it, um, Ebony also says the whole idea of open relationships is now the thing. And yeah, we could talk about that. I'm going to actually put a star in that because that will be something to come back to. And then KSM says, I think I play, she thinks she played the side chick role. It would be because she's the person who wants love, but doesn't want that obligation. She says, I want a two income home, but don't want them in the home. Um, then she says, as O'Head say, being the side is the best. You have your fun and send them home home yeah so that's that's interesting coming over to you tatiana before i go to some of these questions in the chat what's your take on this um there's some wives that have their own side do themselves so they're just doing their own thing and they're not worried about this guy they're like you know i'm getting my needs met you get your needs met let's let's raise these kids together till they're 18 and then we can do our separate ways after that it, it might be that kind of arrangement or they're just not as um, sexually motivated to be with their husbands like their like their husbands want to be. So it could be a number of things, but yeah, that's that's one I'll share. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So Dojo, my man Black Bell says, which would you rather want at the end of the day, the man and his benefits for the remainder of her life, or ensuring he cannot get his rocks off with anyone else? Yeah. And then he also was talking about his perspective on open relationships, saying that it's not new. Marriage became a key thing based on legacy of inheritance rights and who is the rightful heir to certain things. So I do want to go back up to Ebony's original question. What do you guys think about this whole concept of open relationships? Like, is this something that you feel like you could see yourself ever doing and, or why or why not? Um, let's start with you, Pamela. Uh, no. I'm not good with that. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm selfish. Like mm -hmm. if I love you, I want you a hundred percent and I don't want to have to worry about somebody else in our situation. I'm committed to you. I want you to be committed to me. I, if open relationship was the only choice I have, I'll be honest, I would just rather be single. You might as well. I, at that point, you already are <laughs> in an open relationship. Nah, that's a good point. Don, what's your take? Uh, the, the the thing of the open relationship is almost what we discussing today, you know, mm -hmm. side chicks and side dudes, you know, and, um, you know, and it don't make sense for me. <laughs> I came from a, you know, your, your typical nuclear huxtable, yeah, I can say huxtable, huxtable family, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, have a, I had a 
mother and father and brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? So I want that for my future. So a part of it is because of what I saw and how I was raised. And that's what I want for my legacy. Um, for me, like I said, with an open relationship, you introducing a lot of confusion. So I don't want to confuse people. If that makes sense. Right. And going back to what you had mentioned earlier, definitely don't want to confuse children because I feel exactly. like that's when things really just take a turn for the worse. Like, like it, which it's one, one do thing. I call her mom? I'm like, well, she's not your mother because she birthed you. And I, uh, yeah, don't worry about her until later. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's I don't a wild have a discussion with my teen kid. Like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Tatiana, what about you? Could you ever see yourself in an open relationship? Like, what's your take on it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I couldn't do it. I don't like. I don't like the idea of infidelity. Like, that's I've experienced that on both sides of my family bloodline. Like, it's it's not a good look. I don't like that. It's, it broke up marriages. It created all this distrust. It it perverted what God's creation or concept of love is. So it just. It like Don said, it, it makes things confusing and messy, and I don't want that in my life, not at all. <laughs> nah, I feel you. Yeah, it, it, it's way too messy. It's way too messy. And let's flip it for a second. So I asked you whether or not you guys could see yourself in it. Coming back over to you, Pamela, how do you think you respond right now where you are today if you were in a marriage and you found out that your husband had a side chick? Oh. Um, I would probably go just slap off initially, um, really, because I, I just, I, it's such a violation of trust. Mm -hmm. And I would love to hope that I am mature enough that I could have a conversation with my husband about, you know, why are you in this situation? Because that's what I want to know. Like, how did we get here? And what led to this? Because I don't know. I think it's so easy for everybody to say right off rip oh, I'm going to divorce him. Like, yeah, I'm going to go off, but I can't necessarily say I want to divorce him. I mean, we've got to, we're committed. We're, if you're married to me, believe me, we took some time to get to this altar to make sure we were committed and ready. So I don't know if I'm willing to throw you away so easily, but we would definitely have to talk about what it was, try to figure it out. Um, because my first instinct would be to want to have you get out I, quick. But I, I don't think that that's always the root of it. I think you have to understand the situation. I think you do have to have some kind of communication and see if we can rebuild trust to come back from this. Because yeah, I, I don't real. know if we could. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's so wild. Like, um, I was watching HBO uh, Max recently, and it was a show that caught my attention. This show called Scenes from a Marriage. And I, I couldn't make it long because... When this woman revealed to her husband that she had been creeping out on him for months and that she was about to, to move, pick up and move to Israel with him for three months and that, you know, her, I mean, their daughter and him would be okay. When this man was like, all right, I'll, I'll meet you upstairs and crawl in the bed next to her, like ready to go to sleep after this. I'm like, this is not real life. Like th this is a simp at the highest level because I'm like, bro, ain't, ain't no way. Like, ain't, ain't no way, bro, bro. Ain't no way, bro. Like, how are you sitting up in, in, in the bed? Like, and, and she just told you all of this information. And it just goes to show that some people will put up with a lot of stuff. But to your point, Pamela, I feel like that initial reaction. I'm going off. Be, I'm getting a break. That you hot saw. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm getting a break. I might slash your tire. You don't know, but you're going to sit there and you're going to take my slash in that tire. <laughs> and hopefully I can forgive you so I might fix it. If not, all four will be flat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Want to give a shout out really quickly to V Sanchez. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Definitely do. Definitely appreciate that. So hold on. So uh, Dojo says that he disagrees. He says he's seen that show. There are more simps like that dude than actual men. No, no, I agree with you. I think that there are there are quite a few men that will put up with that situation, but I'm speaking for the panel tonight. I, I don't think the panel tonight will find themselves in that position because I know that there are some men out there like that, but all I can say is I'm not one of them. Like there, there's no way in the world you just 
let me know that you've been creeping out on me. And I'm like, all right, I'll see you upstairs, honey. Let me put these dishes up. And then I crawl in bed and I'm waiting for you to get there next to me. Like, that's not going to happen. That's, that's not going to happen. Like, no way. And you, you're telling me, like, you're going to Israel with him for the next three months. And, you know, uh, no, like that, that to me is just like lunacy. I'm just sitting here like, ain't no way, bro. <laughs> Ain't no way. But but Don, what's your take, bro? How would you feel you're married and your wife reveals to you that she got a side dude? Only got to get crossed once. We're done. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Because for me, I can love I can love a woman. I can love, you know what I'm saying? Love is, is there. But trust for me, if I can't trust you no more, we're done. I can still love you. But I don't trust you no more because a marriage is a business too. It's a partnership. It's a merger. It's one entity and another entity. If you betray my trust, how can I continue moving forward with business, with household stuff, with my things, with your things? If you're going to do that, you might as well just be on your own. You only got to do it once. Yeah. That's yeah, that's real. And, and to your, your point about business, it's like finding out your partner has been stealing from the business and you're saying you don't want to dissolve this partnership. It's like that don't even make sense in the business world. Why am I going to continue to be a partner with a known thief? Like he exactly. clearly does not have the business best interest in mind as, at all. If I can't trust you, we don't got nothing. Right. Right. That's real. That's real. Tatiana, what about you? How would you respond if your husband revealed to you that he had a side chick? Yeah, I would be like definitely devastated and feel like the trust would be gone in the relationship. Like to me, like having a side chick is like having a second relationship with someone. It's not just an affair where you just happen to have it one time, but you have this person on your side. You're like intentionally having these, you know, connections with this other person. It's gonna have I'm gonna, I'm gonna have so many questions in my mind. But yeah, it would be hard to bounce back and build from that. Um, Pam made a good point as well. It's like, I put all this work into making this relationship work. Like, I want to see this through at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's very difficult. It's very difficult. But it, I wouldn't let it go that easily. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would yeah. have to give, we would have to go through some therapy, some counseling, and get to know something. He can't just yeah. you know, get in my good graces that easily. Thank you. After that, because that's a betrayal of trust betrayal broke our covenant going out with these other people you know yeah. it just it's just heartbreaking yeah yeah and, and kind of going back to that show that i was saying you know a follow-up question is the question that he asked his wife is do you plan on continue doing it mm -hmm. and at first you know she 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 hit it she hit him with that okie duck it was like i don't know and then she finally was honest and was like yeah so the question is what if if your your husband tatiana and, and pamela is like yeah, I got a side chick and she's not going anywhere. Well, we're not on the same page then in our marriage because right. that's not what I signed up for. Right. And, and you have to make that decision. So for me, I would have to leave because I can do it. Oh, yeah, I would definitely. I would just quickly pack your things because obviously you would. But actually, I wouldn't even do it in that instance. I would say, OK, you sleep in the bedroom tonight. Let you go to work tomorrow. By the time. Time you come home tomorrow, all your stuff will be right on the front porch and the locks will be changed. Yeah. <laughs> and you can go right back to the side chick house now. Hopefully right. She'll, take, she'll gladly take you back. Oh, yeah. She'll take you on fire, like wait until exhale or something. Oh, no. I won't set yourself on fire because I don't want you to sue me. When we go to divorce, I want you to be at everything you need, but I will. I'll have all your boxes packed. By the time you go to work and come home, you'll be like, oh my God, I'll have the locks changed, an attorney, and all your stuff on the front porch. Papers ready. Papers ready. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. I already filed, bro. I already yeah, filed. And I ain't mad at that. You know, kind of, I take the approach that, that Don has where, and I say this as a single man, like I'm not married and I'll be the first one to admit, like similar to you, Pamela, if I've married a woman, I've made a sizable investment, right? And to your point, Donovan, like if you built up a corporation, a business, it's hard to walk away from that. It's hard to just dissolve it, especially if, You've invested a lot of time, energy, resources. 
you don't want to just walk away. I don't think that that would be as automatic as a response as it is for me as a single man, mm -hmm. where if I was with a woman and she violated prior to marriage, I mean, like there, that's a no brainer to me in many instances where it's just like, that's it. But marriage is different because how many years do we have? What's invested? Main point I wanted to make going back to that show is just, and what Donovan has been mentioning is the children. Like, I feel like that's that guy's situation would have been an easy result if he didn't have a daughter up there in the house. And I'm like, because if I had a daughter, like either one, <laughs> like you can leave or I mean, didn't have a daughter, like either one, you can leave or like I'm out. Like, I mean, after you tell me something like that, I'm definitely not really trying to cohabitate with you in this moment because I need to cool down because that that's just crazy. Like what you just told me. So I don't know, man, everybody is different, but you know, it's interesting to see uh, I mean, of course I'll be. these situations. I'll nah, be say that again, I said, of course I'll be hurt, but I don't want, I don't feel like working on it at that point. You know yeah. what I mean? I just, cause like, like Pablo said, like I made a, like, and you said, and even touching up, like I made a sizable investment, not monetarily, but just time and effort and everything. And yeah, you don't really want to walk away from that, but you got to, I believe. Uh, well, for me, I would have to because, and I don't really want a divorce, really, truthfully. Like when I'm married, I don't want to get divorced. <laughs> My parents said get divorced, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to continue the the, the, the tradition, you know what I'm saying? I don't, nah, I don't, want to, I don't want to go out like that. I do understand therapy and, and, and counseling and things of that nature. I mean, we'll do it. It'll be performative for me. But <laughs> I'm being, I'm staying fact. It'll be performative for me. But I'm still probably gonna go through with it because I don't I don't believe you no more. Mm -hmm. Even if I did it, I don't expect to get a chance either. You know what I'm saying? So because I obviously broken something sacred. So I don't want to. Why would I want you to put you through that? The best thing we can probably do, if especially we have kids, is just co-parent. And we can be able to move on and do what you want to do. And I'll do what I want to do. You know? That's that's all I want to say. That's no, just it's just it's just being matter of fact and concrete. And I know we live in a world where we can't be a matter of matter of fact and concrete, but if you but I believe that's where peace is sometimes, where you can be matter of fact and concrete. And it's gonna hurt in the beginning, but you're gonna you're gonna be all right. That's all. <laughs> nah, that's real. That's real. So we had a comment that came in from Tiffany Smith. She says, as a single person, I never tolerated cheating and I will not accept it in my marriage. Peace of mind and happiness is not worth losing. Yeah, that's real. And then um, Black Belt had mentioned another aspect about that TV show. He was saying that man has no standing any longer with his daughter ever expecting him after that that he allowed. And I agree. Like to me, where I was done with that show, where I, I was done, like, cause I was like, he he's he's okay with it, but I'm I'm just like, I, if I was in this situation, I, I, I'm done. Done is when the daughter came out from laying down, and she came up to her daddy and was like, "Yo, I want the pancakes that the other guy makes me." My daughter asking me for another man's pancakes in my house. Whoa! And no, no, like to even open myself up to a situation. Wow. Where my daughter is not asking Ooh. daddy to come make her some pancakes, but she want mommy's side dude to make her some pancakes in my house. That right there is when I was like, yes. nah, I can't with this. I can't right there. And like Black, like, like Black Bell said, no respect for your daughter to even just come and, and ask, make that request, bro. Like, uh, not at all. A dog is a super saiyan sound. Mm. <laughs> Dang. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Crazy. Bro, it's crazy. It's crazy, y'all. Uh, it's Weak. crazy. <laughs> Weak. So, so the next question is, why do you think it's difficult for some men to let the side chick go? Um, Tatiana, what's your take on that one? Um, because he's getting all the benefits. He can he gets everything he wants. In in his mind, he's winning. So he why why change a good thing to him? That's what I think. Okay. Pamela, what's your take? I agree with what Tatiana said, but then I also think in some instances, depending on the timing, I think there's feelings involved too. And I think he's just, it, he's caught, caught up. He didn't realize it, but I think 
if you look at it when you're faced with the fact that you might have to lose what you got, I, I think they would realize some feelings are involved. And that's why I think it's harder for some men to cut that off. That's real. Donovan, what's his name? <laughs> I agree with Tatiana Pamela because she do that one thing. You know, I never had that done to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see what that be like. You know? but, you know, but that's what, no, I agree with both Tatiana and Pamela. That's the mindset. I'm winning. I, I got the main, I got this going, I got all girl. I'm oh she do the thing like I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> so so I I got I got a question for Tatiana and Pamela from the woman's perspective. It does it matter or is it worse if a man has more than one side chick or is like one the same as many um from your perspective as a woman? I think it's the principle that he stepped out of the relationship to connect with anyone else, you know, in that way. I think I'd be more mad at the, you know, I'd be like the audacity of this dude for having multiples, but I'd mm -hmm. definitely be, be more betrayed by the fact that he just, you know, strayed in the first place. Gotcha. I agree. The only thing I, was, I would think is if you have multiple, I'm like, I'm really mad because now I'm like, you really for the streets. Like you are just all for the streets. You got multiple women out here believing these lies and I'm just going to be like extra pissed. But I agree. Even the fact that you did it is a problem, but I'll be extra mad because you have more women than one. Nah, that's real. That's real. And look, uh, Black Bell was like, nah, if he got three side chicks, he being wasteful with the money now. <laughs> Facts. Yo, because I mean, yo, you got you you gotta maintain it, man. Super like facts. you gotta maintain it, bro. Now that, you playing with my money too? Oh, oh okay. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yo, look, look, you said you can never let the side chicks get individually or in aggregate more than the main woman, right? Right. <laughs> True facts. Yo, my man, bringing the statistics. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back to something that you guys uh, brought up as we begin to close things out. Y'all talked about the feelings being caught and love being on the table. Let, let's come over to my man Donovan. Man, like, are dudes falling in love with these side chicks? Are they loving them? It can happen. <laughs> I'm not, it can happen. It's just like with anything. If you, if you, if you confide into the side chicks, like, like with the Tiger Woods situation, and it's, it's, you can more emotionally involved, and she's there for you because you can't stand how your main cooking, how your main loving, how your main taking care of the house. And like, I'm just like, uh, you know, you over it. It can happen. It can happen. I'm not saying, I mean, obviously I'm not speaking from experience, but all I'm saying is that I can see that happen. You know, it, you can be involved and, and you know what I mean? And she's doing everything that you wanted your main to be doing and you just not getting it. And that's kind of, that's how I see it. Yeah. Nah, that's real. Tatiana, what's your perspective as a woman? Do um, you think men can fall in love with these side chicks? Yeah, I think so. Especially if they're meeting their emotional needs. If it's beyond a sexual relationship, then I'm sure. I'm sure they can. Yo, that's real. That's real. And hold on, I got to come here. KSM was asking, what's the name of the show? Uh, it's on HBO Max. It's called Scenes from a Marriage. Yeah, Scenes from a Marriage. So coming over to you, Pamela, falling in love with the side chicks. Is that oh. is that a thing? Oh, yeah. I think it happens more often than not, too. That's why I think some people have these long-term side chicks. Because I don't know. Not that I'm saying I know everything about men. But I think for you guys, you know, you're able to compartmentalize very easily. So if you find you are able to sort out who is just here for a quick little, you know, whatever, and who you really connect with. And I think what happens is you naturally spend more time with the people that you connect with. I think that emotional connection slips up on a guy. And then at the same time, she probably is doing that thing thing. Like Don kind of said. So it's like you get the emotional and the thing thing. And you got this. It's like it's you're like in a kid in a candy store. So I just feel like it's easy to make dudes fall in love because it's like you're like the perfect woman. 
you know, without all the stress of having the other committed relationship. So that's why I think like it can happen. Yeah, oh, that's real. That's real. And um, Black Bell had a comment. He says, this is a myth that women don't hold on. Oh, no, excuse me, that men do not love women easily. Men easily love side chicks because it is our nature to protect and provide for women we favor. So like that was the, the justification that he was giving for it. And then Ebony says, just make sure all parties get tested. I don't see anything good coming from this lifestyle. And that's real. That's real. Yeah. Like there, there's not much light at the end of the tunnel, man. Because as we had, we had mentioned earlier, and I think somebody had even mentioned it in the chat, you know, it's a lose-lose situation across the board for sure. For sure. So before we wrap up and I get everybody's closing thoughts, I did want to uh, give Tatiana the floor to let everybody know about your custom frames, how they can show you some support as well. Thanks, Jay. So yes, I have a frame shop on Etsy called Notes by Tatiana, where I have fabric covered photo frames, also have artwork, greeting cards, and photo mats for your frames. So if you have a certain style that you want, or you want to upgrade your home, add some, you know, pizzazz, razzle dazzle to your interior decor. I have a variety of styles, so you can check it out on Etsy. Um, it's also, I'm also doing a, a couple of frames for Jay this week. Thank you, Jay, for your support. I'll be working on those and sending them out to you. But yeah, if you want a custom frame outside of the styles that we have in our store, you can always hit me up and I'll be happy to collaborate with you on your next project. Most definitely. And I drop the link in the chat for you guys to check it out as well. But with that being said, I just want to go around and get everybody's last or closing words. So um, coming over to Pamela, what's your take on the conversation of side chick? Any last words or any last questions you like to throw out there? I mean, I think it's just like we kind of talked about, like dating is like the wild, wild west. Relationships are like the wild, wild west. For women, I think we have to take our part just to make sure, one, we don't allow ourselves to be in positions where we don't know our worth, where we can easily slide into side chick status because you're just trying to see blinders about somebody. And then I think for men, it's just about staying communicative with us and us, you know, asking the right questions. I don't think we all have to live this lifestyle if we don't want to. You know, it's just up to us to do what's necessary to have the type of relationships that we need and what we deserve. So, but this has been a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. No, nah, it, was, it was. I've enjoyed yeah. you guys and all of the perspectives that you all shared. Coming over to my man, Don. Yo, what's your closing words? Any last questions that you'd like to throw out there? Um, uh, no, I don't have any questions. It was a great conversation. Um, it was an interesting perspective because I didn't know what I was going to say coming in <laughs> at all. And, uh, you know, um, but I, I, the main thing that I, uh, you know, I always say to anybody, like, like, like I said, I got a little sister, so I'm an older brother. I don't want her dealing with fools and stuff like that. And I don't want to, as a single man, I don't want to come across you know, low vibration situations myself. So communication and understanding is key. Communication is first, but you got to make sure they can understand too, and you understand too, um, things and, and and create boundaries and create um, uh, a, a sense of um, intention with how you move. You know what I'm saying? Let it be known. You're not doing this. I will do that. I'm gonna bend on that, but I ain't gonna break, you know, things of that nature. It's it's okay to have these conversations. Yes, they're difficult, but they're okay. And, you know, and everybody got an opportunity to grow too. So if somebody ain't with you right then, leave that alone until they are able to do that. If you wanna spend the block on that, but you don't gotta spend the block on that either. You can keep it moving too. So that's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But it's, it was all good. It was great to be here. You know what I'm saying? I don't really do interviews. <laughs> I'm really quiet. <laughs> like, who want to listen to a producer? They listen to the, to the rapper and stuff. Like, yo, you know man, yo. <laughs> but I already know, man. We be having some great conversations. I felt sure. it was an honor for sure to have you come on here and join us, man. You and yeah. Pamela, y'all both know y'all got an open invitation if y'all ever want to come back on the show for sure. And before we wrap up, Tatiana, any last closing thoughts or questions or words that you like to share? Yeah, thank you, Pam and Don, for joining us tonight. We uh, definitely appreciate your perspectives on everything. And um, we, I think we're all on the same consensus here that it's not a good idea. You have so many options 
ladies and gentlemen, so many options. There's like billions of people in the world. You don't have to have somebody else's man or somebody else's woman. Like choose better for yourself because you believe you deserve better, like Pam said. Like we just gotta get to, if you really feel like that's all you can get, you need to take a break from dating or relationships and just get get back to loving yourself because there's there's more for you out here than living like that. Oh, that's real. That's real, y'all. I have enjoyed Pamela, Don, as well as you, Tatiana, all of the things that you guys have shared tonight. One last thing that I wanted to share with everybody before we go, just one last reminder about tomorrow's show. So once again, tomorrow we have an exclusive private men chat that's going to be going live. If you guys want to join, I just put the link in the chat. Go over to rightsrolllove.com slash live. My man, Black Belt, will actually be joining us on this show again. Um, so if, if you enjoy Black Belt, you want to hear some more of him, uh, then, yo, he'll be back on the show. And, yeah, this is going to be a great conversation tomorrow, things women do to lose a good man. So definitely don't miss out on that. But I, I just want to say thank you guys so much for a great show. We'll be back next Tuesday live for everybody to tune in and join us. We'll have some more great panel individuals joining us. Yo, tonight was fun. I, I really appreciate Don and Pamela coming back on for the second time. And yo, next Tuesday, we got a, another great, great topic lined up. So thank you guys again for joining us. And we look forward to uh, catching you guys next Tuesday. So with that being said, we'll see you guys then. Stay blessed. Thanks. All right, bye, y'all. Bye.